Well, good morning, friends, and from the Foreside Community Church and the Falmouth Congregational Church, welcome to this time of worship together. We are so thrilled to be able to gather from wherever or whenever we join in this worship service to share our lives and our praise with one another and with God. I get to say thank you in particular for the chance to be back with you today and thank you for the chance to be away last week. And so a special thank you to Pastor Amelia and to the staff to allow me that time. And I say it every time and so I better keep that strand going and so I will say thank you to Foresight Community Church the ways in which you support and nurture your staff through time to rest, to reflect, and to renew makes a difference in our lives, in our families, and in our ministry. So thanks again. Speaking of joining back in, this would be a great time. If you haven't done this yet, consider it. To share this video stream as you're watching you can share it on your Facebook page so that everyone might know that you are in worship and folks might be able to join you. And I want you to know you can always just individually share this worship with people that you think might really benefit from a chance to gather in worship. Whether that's because of a time of sorrow or joy or searching and wondering Reaching out to someone to let them know that you personally are thinking of them and wishing for them a place of spirit, of rest, renewal, and of journeying with God makes a difference. And so as we begin to worship today, it is good always to give thanks to God for that peace beyond all understanding, the peace of Christ. And so... Let us offer one another that peace, saying something like this. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And now as we finish passing that peace of Christ into our homes, into our hearts, and into the world, let us prepare ourselves more fully for worship as we join together in our opening call. May the God who brings us new life in Christ resurrected and hope restored call us to laughter and singing shared by young and old rejoicing in the birth of hope even in times of sorrow. Glory to God whose power working through us is capable of more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church. And in Christ Jesus, who gathers us in. And now let us gather ourselves in by joining together in our first hymn. Oh, happy 
So friends, so many milestones in our lives have been upended by the current pandemic. Definitely that has been true for our children in their school lives, the ways in which they do their learning, and the ways in which they do their connection. I give thanks to God for our CE staff between our two congregations who have been finding ways to connect, connect with our children and connect with our families in these challenging times. So this would usually be the Sunday that we would mark the end of the church school year and we would gift people Bibles at the Forsyth Community Church and we would give thanks for all that we have done together. We'll wait till we can gather next time to be able to share Bibles and those kinds of gifts. But we do want to say thank you. Thank you to parents. Thank you to kids. And thank you to our staff for the ways in which you have continued to show up, to learn, and to grow together as the church. So here's a little video giving thanks for all that has been in the past year and celebrating the gift of all of our life together as we learn and grow. youth group because of the people there and um, everyone is very nice and kind and they really try hard um, to make activities fun for us and I have learned a lot because of it. My name is Evan Matibia and I really like the Falmouth Community Church and I like their youth group and how they can kind of connect with us and how they do fun activities, such as like them setting up an escape room for us or something else fun, like watching a movie. And I really liked that about their church. The memory that I chose to tell you about is Tag. I really loved doing tag, and I loved communion and the Christmas fair. Those are some of my happiest memories from church. My favorite memory at church school was painting the bench because everyone was there and it was really fun. and playing the piano for you and, and hearing you sing. So I have my helper with me. This is Maddie. And she's going to help me play and sing a song that we can all sing along with together. And you know, on Easter we celebrate the return of Jesus and the return of light and his light in the world. And we carry that light with us everywhere we go and everyone we talk to. So we're going to sing This Little Light of Mine. And Ella might come in and help me out too. So Maddie and Ella are here. And I'll shout out some words you can sing along. Yeah. What I thought about the things I've learned at Sunday school 
is the thing that stands out the most is that God's Spirit is always watching over us. And I'll let, I'll, Scott, always be kind. One thing I learned in church school this year was that God is always with us. I like painting the bench and seeing the whole community work hard on the bench. And I liked that the bench was a symbol for welcoming everybody. I liked playing with everyone on um, at Sunday school and I don't miss them. Goodbye! so special and we had a great place to go and we just want to say thank you to you so bye it was very fun for the whole year hi everybody we hope, hope you guys, guys are safe, safe and healthy have, have a great summer, summer. we miss we you, miss you. And then finally, you heard some kids giving thanks for the ministry that Kristen shares with the Falmouth Congregational Church. I want to be sure to thank Laura and Beth for their work at Foresight Community in the last year. And our kids wanted to be sure to say thank you. And so you'll see their message that they're passing on right now on the screen. Thank you. Thank you to our congregations. Thank you to our ministries that empower and allow our staff to do wonderful work and ministry and allow us to listen for the Spirit in the lives of our young people. Each and every one of you is a blessing. Have a great summer. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, as we gather this morning, we hold in our hearts and minds all the different generations of the church. We know that here with us, although we cannot see each other, we know that there are babies and small children. We know that there are teenagers and elders. We ask that you might open our hearts, whatever stage or state you find us in, so that we might truly experience your presence and be open to this time of worship. Refresh us, O oh Lord, and help us to turn again to our best selves as we say together our prayer of conviction. Loving God, when we forget we are yours, Remind us of your love, which formed us. 
when we fail to honor your image in our neighbor. Restore in us the heart of Christ for others. When we lose sight of you and your hope for our world and for our lives. Show us your spirit moving in and through us all. Friends, may we all be assured of God's grace. The compassion of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. God's mercy is new every morning, and great is God's faithfulness. Amen. Scripture reading for today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour. Knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. Here ends today's scripture reading. So will you be in prayer with me? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. It may be that sometime in your life you have waited so long for a blessing, so long for some sign of new life, that the waiting becomes the new normal. That's where Sarah and Abraham are at the start of this story, right? It is possible in those times to wait so long that you begin to think that the waiting is what will define you, what you will be remembered for. Sarah and Abraham had been waiting so long for a child. And we can be sure that among us are people who know that ache and that longing and that waiting. Sometimes with the relief of joy and sometimes with the sorrow of recognizing what will be. 
Abraham and Sarah had been waiting so long that Sarah is supposed to be 90 years old when this story takes place. So we can give thanks for the miraculous and the mythological parts of this story because I have a hard time getting out of bed right now and I just could not imagine getting up for the midnight feeding in about 50 years. You can tell me maybe you are feeling more spry than I am. But I have been thinking about the waiting, the painful waiting of Sarah, waiting for new life in the news of the last few weeks. The waiting of communities of color, of black Americans in particular, for systems of justice that feel just. We have seen the anguish of our neighbors who have waited for far too long for evidence in our common life that their lives matter. And we have seen the pain and the desperation that hundreds of years of evidence to the contrary can produce. I also realize in that waiting, there is a waiting that can overtake us. In all the longing for change and for justice, we can become numb. We, who are not as directly affected, can become complacent. We all can become cynical. There is a waiting that hardens, that becomes solid, and comes to define our reality. And friends, I'm here to tell you that it gets to me as much as it might get to others. I'm here to tell you that three or so weeks ago, when I heard of cries, particularly from younger people online, to restructure and reform and even fund differently structures and systems of policing, I, no joke and to my shame, thought, I'm not kidding, kids these days. You are allowed to laugh at me because up until that point, I think I was, well, youngish, but I did age 20 years in the second of that thought. But, thanks be to God for kids these days, because in three weeks they have made me a convert and an advocate and helped me to understand what it might mean to reshape how we relate to one another across the awful divides of race, which we have been subject to and part of, and across the false line between those who live in our communities and those who are charged with policing them. We have made it far too easy to have it be an us and a them, a police and a citizenry. We are all us. We are all we. And the pain and the anguish of this moment reminds us of that. There will be no way in which we will all have justice, we will all have peace, if we are not one we. So in my little delightful conversion, I have been spending some time reflecting on what I know about the possibility of change in my own heart and in my own mind and in my community and the world around me. Maybe it is time for me, maybe it's time for all of us to release what we know about possibilities for change, even for those things which have been so painfully unchanging for all these many years. It can be easy to fall into patterns where even if we rail against the symptoms of division, oppression, or injustice, we fall back into thinking that there is nothing that can be done about the overarching systems 
which create those symptoms. So our model for today is Sarah. So about that laugh. Sarah, so certain that her blessing has been lost, so certain that there is not a child coming to her, when she hears the announcement of God's messengers, that new life is coming to her and to Abraham, she laughs. She doesn't deny it. She doesn't walk away from it. She laughs. And the angels seem to take it as a slight, but I think we can take it as a lightness. I am here to say today, thanks be to God for a woman who could, essentially homeless and 90 years old, waiting on a miracle that she is sure is not coming, could still laugh. Who could even hold her sorrow lightly enough that her life could be changed. It makes me think of so many of the healing stories of Jesus in which the miracle of the healing often begins in the sick person's powerful hope that they can be well. If you go to the Hebrew of our text today, you will sometimes get a translation rather than just Sarah laughed. Something closer to Sarah laughed within herself. It is bodily. So much so that here's kind of the poetic translation that you could use. Sarah and Abraham laugh in their belly or they womb laugh. And so when their son comes to be, he will be called Isaac. That is laughter or even God laughs. God and Sarah together get the last laugh here even in the midst of so much, so many years of sorrow and of waiting, even in the midst of struggle and of strife, there is such a thing as a laugh that can co-create with God in the possibility of what can be. One of the former chaplains of the Iona community in Scotland, John Bell, started to write a hymn about all of the women of the Bible, seeking more ways to have those women characters be a part of our hymnody. And he says that Sarah ought to be the model, the patron saint, the standard bearer for our mainline Protestant congregations in Europe, in the U.S., all those places. For she is a 90-year-old woman who can laugh the next generation into being. What does it look like for us to be elders who can laugh the next generation into being? Can hold lightly our past so that we might give it up to the possibility of change in that next generation. It's good for, us, good for us to remember this Sunday as we give thanks for the church school year that has been. It is good to remember that church school is part of how we teach God's children about God's love. But it's also how we prepare them and prepare ourselves to listen for the Holy Spirit in them, which is leading us into the possibility and power of God's future. As they grow, it is our responsibility to listen to them, unafraid to laugh at what we were so sure we knew, that we may see it transformed by them into new life and new hope. So a little homework for you in all that is going on in the world, find somebody of a generation below you, maybe, and talk to them a little bit about what is going on in the world. They may have questions for you, but you may have questions for them as well. And I might invite you 
with all of your years of wisdom and experience to hold those things lightly. That you might see how God is moving in that next generation. You might see new life beginning even as we release the pain of what has been. We do this, friends, because our ancestors built the church like a time machine, but they didn't build it so that we and our kids could pile in and go back in time. They built it so that Jesus could travel to the future. The challenge is to hold our past and even our painful, uncertain present of what has been and what is is now lightly enough that we can be surprised by the possibility and the wonder of resurrection life, of what can be. For as the angelic messenger asks Sarah and Abraham, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? In the end, when Isaac is born, when the star that would give birth to all the stars and saints to come, finally arrives. Sarah, the 90-year-old mother, says this, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. So may you hear, and may you laugh trusting in God's love and God's transformation in the resurrection life of Christ and in your life. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we come here this morning with our hearts full of prayers. Prayers for ourselves, for our own patience, for our own perseverance, for our own walk with and towards you and our best selves. Prayers for our world, for all of those who we hear about and read about and see as we look to our newspapers and to our social media. We are newly aware, perhaps, Lord, of the suffering of the world, including the suffering of our black siblings suffering of those who are fighting on the front lines against the COVID-19 pandemic, those who are fighting for their health, fighting against loneliness. Prayers also for those who are close to us, for our relatives, for our children, our grandchildren, for our friends, for those in our community who are especially burdened during this time. And Lord, we admit to you that it is too much, that our hearts and our brains and our worlds, they are too full this morning for us to handle. And so it is a relief to know that you are here. You are working in those spaces where people are crying out in need. You are working to bring community together. You are working to let us know how we can help. You are giving us ears to listen, giving us hearts to care. Lord, we know that you are our partner. We unburden ourselves now as we write some of our prayers into the comments section of Facebook Live. We share our needs and our joys within our communities as you taught us to do. And some of these prayers, Lord, we know that you hear only in the silence of our hearts. And we give thanks for your scriptures that assure us that even those things that we do not have words for, even those things that are rumblings, are fully understood and held and cherished by you. Lord, it is in great gratitude that we remember that we are not alone, but that you are with us, that our communities are with us, that 
your Holy Spirit is amongst us. We give you thanks for this knowledge. We give you thanks for the children of our church school. We ask that you would go with them this summer. You would be with their educators, with their parents, with their camp counselors, for those of them who, are, who will go to camp, that you're with their grandparents. We ask that you would help them to grow more fully into your image. And we pray the same thing for ourselves. And we wrap all of these prayers up to you. Those said in our hearts, those typed in the comments, and those said out loud. We wrap them all up to you, saying those words that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we are the church, individually and as one. And so the ministry of all the church is from the gathered gifts of each of our lives and all of our life together. In the last week, the ways in which you share from your life to our church's lives has enabled us to care for neighbors in need in really challenging times has enabled us to show up in our community, places where the church's voice is needed, has enabled us to learn and grow together, both as children and as adults, and it has enabled us to continue to worship, sharing in prayer, praise, and even song in times in which we are having to be apart. I give you thanks for every one of those gifts that you share with us. And I'm here today to simply ask you one thing. Can we do it again? Can we, this next week, continue to show up in our world, in our community, and offer the face of Christ to a world that longs to see it? You'll see links now in ways in which you can donate to your congregation. If you are able to, we give you thanks. If you're not able to at this time, we give you thanks for the ways you share your life with us just the same. All these gifts go to the work, the service, and the love of God. And so our morning offerings will now be received.
So you, beloved of God, go into the world to share the gifts of your own life. In all that has been, may you hold it lightly and may you laugh that you might find within yourself and others may find just as well the joy of the life of Christ transforming you, transforming us, transforming all the world to one more just, more whole, and more loving. In all these things, go with the love of God and the grace of Christ Jesus and the power and peace of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. Go in peace and the peace of God.